ABC Listen. Podcasts, radio, news, music and more. Hi, News Daily listeners. I'm Danielle O'Neill and I've got a new podcast I want to share with you. It's called Expanse, Uncropped. And at a time where it feels like division is the norm, I've gone back to a story from the 60s that was incredibly divisive to try and see what lessons we can learn. It's a wild story with farmers and UFOs and media pylons. Check it out by following Expanse on the ABC Listen app. Before we get to today's episode, I wanted to let you know we're doing a listener survey and we really want to hear from you about how you've found the show this year and how we can make it even better. It's short, anonymous, and you can find the link on our website. Just search for ABC News Daily. Almost every day since his election, Donald Trump has been unveiling new members of his team. And the picks say a lot. He's chosen a vaccine sceptic as health secretary, a TV host to take charge of defence, and an accused drug and sex offender as Attorney General. Today, national political reporter for The Hill, Julia Manchester, on what it all says about how Trump will govern. I'm Sam Hawley on Gadigal Land in Sydney. This is ABC News Daily. Well, US President-elect Donald Trump has nominated Robert F. Kennedy Jr. to head the United States Federal Health Agency. Former Democratic Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, who's previously implied that the Russian president had valid grounds for invading Ukraine, is Trump's pick as Director of National Intelligence. Well, Matt Gates is certainly a surprise. If he is confirmed in that role, he would oversee the department that until last year was investigating him on possible sex trafficking offences. There are questions over whether choices such as former Congressman Matt Gates for Attorney General will be confirmed by the Republican-controlled Senate. Julia, we're going to look at some of the people Trump has chosen to be part of his team so far and what it tells us about how he is going to govern. But first, just tell me about this because This team, it's largely about loyalty, isn't it? What does loyalty look like to Donald Trump? Well, look, I think it's a good question. Loyalty, I think, means sticking by him through thick and thin. And, you you know, going back to his first administration, there have been a number of people, um, you know, who served in his administration, who served in Congress, Republicans who worked with him, but have since fallen out with him or have since left his orbit. But at the same time, there are others who have stayed with him really through, you know, his worst moments and his good moments. So, for example, during the 2020 presidential election results, there were a lot of Republicans who spoke out against him. A number of them, most notably former Congresswoman Liz Cheney, have since fallen out Mm. with him. But others have maintained their relatively good relationship with him, like Senator Marco Rubio, for example, or former Congressman Matt Gates. Yeah, and we'll talk about Gates a bit more in a moment because, wow, that is a, that's an incredible pick. But um, yes. before we get there, he also looks to what they look like, how they talk, what they look like standing next to him. Appearances mean a lot to Donald Trump. They do. You know, certainly people who are telegenic, who go on TV a lot. You know, I don't think he necessarily has a type in terms of what they physically look like. But if they present well on TV, present well on stage, I think Donald Trump likes that. That's why, for example, during the Veep stakes, uh, when he was choosing his vice presidential pick, you saw people like J.D. Vance, Marco Rubio, Doug Burgum all over cable news because Donald Trump is watching that. So he likes people who are presentable in front of some sort of an audience. All right, so these picks that we've learnt so far, and there has been a stream of them, of course, in recent days, just broadly, what do they tell us about how Trump will approach his presidency? Do they show us that he wants to shake things up? 
Absolutely, yes. And there are some picks in here. You know, I think there are some picks that are very shocking and they're meant to be shocking. And there are others that are pretty expected and pretty mainstream, if you will. The mainstream ones, I would say, are Senator Marco Rubio for Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. He has bipartisan support from Republicans and Democrats. Mike Waltz, congressman from uh, Florida, being national security advisor, he's also gotten that bipartisan Mm -hmm. support. But then you have another category of the candidates like, you know, Matt Gates, obviously the former congressman who has been under investigation by the House Ethics Committee, as well as the Justice Department, the very department he's being tapped to lead for alleged sexual misconduct, potentially with a minor, illicit drug use, among other allegations. Then you have Pete Hegseth, which came out of left field for a lot of us watching this, a former or current Fox News weekend host. So and then, of course, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Certainly, um, you know, I think a number of these candidates or these nominees are meant to shake things up, you know, even if they don't necessarily get the nomination. Trump nominating them Mm. in itself is shaking things up. Yeah, all right. Well, Julia, let's just unpack that a bit further, some of these picks that you've mentioned there. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. in the position of health. I mean, that's wow, right? Because he is a true vaccine sceptic, isn't he? He is. He is. And look, I mean, there's that. There's him saying he wants to take fluoride out of drinking water in the United States, talking about how vaccines lead to autism, something that has you know no evidence behind him. First of all, anybody who wants to take a vaccine, I'm not going to get in their way. But I am going to tell the truth to Americans. I'm not going to I'm going to do for the first time good science. Right. There's some things that he talks about that are actually quite popular, like, you know, maybe limiting additives Mm. into foods in the U.S. But it's the vaccine part Mm. of it that certainly gets, you know, a lot of backlash and people raising their eyebrows because, look, we are a few years out of the coronavirus pandemic. I think there's a lot of questions as to what he would do on that end particularly when people, when there's a real, I think, nervousness surrounding the possibility of some other endemic or pandemic. Yeah, and there's certainly concern about what he might be allowed to do in a Trump administration. By the way, I think he is not a fan of Trump's diet, right? He doesn't like all the McDonald's that Donald Trump eats. He doesn't, but He was photographed last night on Trump Force One with the former or the president-elect having McDonald's Uh, with him, the Speaker of the House and others and a, you know, regular uh, mm. Coca-Cola. So that was that's something that's sort of making the rounds on social media, too. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, Matt Gates, as you mentioned, I mean, this is extraordinary, right? Attorney General. I mean, there couldn't be a position less fitting for this man. There's even a congressional ethics report into his conduct that's actually been kept under wraps at the moment, isn't there? Yeah. So we know that last week the Ethics Committee was supposed to meet to vote on whether they would release the report. That meeting was cancelled. So we don't know what's going to happen there. But it's just incredibly ironic that he's being tapped to lead this government agency when he's been under investigation by the government agency. Matt Gates denies all these allegations against him, but it's still very notable. And it's notable enough that a number of Senate Republicans, a number of House Republicans have spoken spoken out against his nomination. It's really unclear whether he'll even get nominated in the first place. I mean, it's very possible that four Senate Republicans could vote against him. Mm -hmm. And that's all that would be needed for his nomination to tank. So I think a lot of people are asking the question, is Matt Gates a sacrificial lamb here at the end of the day? Yeah, because of course, yes, these positions do need to be approved by the Senate. It is or will be Republican controlled, the Senate. Is this a test, a Trump test for the senators to show loyalty to him in some way? I mean, it just seems like such a a bizarre pick. Yes, I think it, it could be viewed as that. But I will say this, the person who's leading Senate Republicans right now, the Senate Majority Leader, North Dakota Senator John Thune, 
He's, you know, clearly in support of the former president, but he's not necessarily from the Trump wing of the party. This is someone who spoke out against Trump's unfounded claims that the 2020 election was stolen four years ago. There could be some pushback there. And I think senators don't like in general to be sort of interfered. They don't like interference from the outside. So this could be a bit of a push and pull between Trump and Senate Republicans. Mm, All right. So Matt Gates might be vetoed by the Senate. That remains to be seen. What about Tulsi Gabbard? She'll be the director, if Trump gets his way, of national intelligence, which is a pretty big, vital role. Tell me about her. There's a lot of questions about Tulsi Gabbard. You know, you hear this phrase Russian agent sort of thrown around because she has made comments about U.S. adversaries like, you know, Vladimir Putin and even Bashar al-Assad, the president of Syria. She secretly met with him in 2017. She's made comments about these people who are adversaries that would seem to suggest that she doesn't view them as adversaries. She's a very populist figure. I have no doubt that he will meet with Putin. He will meet with Zelensky. He will meet with Kim Jong-un. He will meet with anyone he needs to in order to work towards peace. But there is a question as to, you know, how she would, I guess, lead going forward, given these comments about, you know, other foreign leaders. You know, I think there's a lot of Democrats and even some Republicans who have concerns about her in this position. All right. Well, Julia, of course, a number of the policies that Trump took to the campaign were really controversial, including deporting millions of migrants. Does this team that he's picked, does it tell us that it wasn't just wild bravado, that he was actually being serious about what he wants to do? I mean, look, immigration was one of Trump's top policy issues. And quite frankly, it was a top issue for, you know, the majority of American voters. We just don't really know how this will work, but we do know that a lot of this will be done by executive order. So Donald Trump essentially, you know, is signing an order and then it being carried out. Christy Noem and Tom Homan, certainly in terms of immigration, they are hardliners on that. So expect them to sort of go along with much of Trump's rhetoric. I think there's going to be a removal of the U.S. from the Paris Climate Accord, for example. So um, they certainly reflect, I think, the former president's rhetoric on some of these issues. Well, Julia, if Trump's team is full of yes men and women, what does that actually mean for good governance? What are people expecting to see in the next four years? I mean, it's really unclear. And I think a lot of it falls back really to Congress and the, and the Senate in particular. Sure, Donald Trump can fill out as many executive orders as he wants to, but there's going to be challenges to that. And some of you know what Trump has to do to implement his agenda has to go through Congress. And a lot of it has to do in the Senate. I mean, is John Thune, the Republican leader, willing to push back against Trump? In the House of Representatives, we know that Republicans hold a very, very narrow majority. And there's a lot of internal divisions within the Republican House conference. So that plays into it. Mm. I think it's just kind of hard to answer that question, you know, because so much of it has to go through Congress. And I think Donald Trump, we're still seeing this relationship with congressional Republicans, in particular Senate Republicans. We're still trying to see how that will play out. I think we'll have more of an answer to that once we get through these nominations. Julia Manchester is the national political reporter for The Hill. This episode was produced by Sydney Peed. Audio production by Sam Dunn. Our supervising producer is David Coney. I'm Sam Hawley. Don't forget to take our listener survey. The link is on our website. And ABC News Daily will be back again tomorrow. Thanks for listening. <laughs>